how are you? In today's video we're going to be talking about carrier method intros because we have added a new little guy to our crew. This is Mac and Cheese. He's a fawn top ear from Whispering Grove Rattery in Georgia and we are just really enjoying his sweet personality. Um, so stay tuned. Today's video we're talking about the carrier method. It is a method of introductions that is not extremely well known in the United States and so a lot of people are not super understanding of how it works. So I thought I would make a video explaining why I use it and what I like about it um, and just talking about it a little bit so that hopefully people will understand how it works and why it works. So the first thing to understand is that in normal um, intros in the United States, a lot of people use what's called the cage swap method where your rats are quarantined and then you move their cages into the same room, then you swap items from their cages so that they can get used to each other's smell. Um, I don't like this method and the reason for that is that it just frustrates rats. They can smell this intruder but they can't find them to do anything about it. Um, they can't sort out hierarchy, they can't figure out if this rat is friendly or not. So as a result, you just wind up with frustrated rats and the process takes a really long time. Um, the other reason I don't like it is I commonly see people use it and then go right to a not clean, fully furnished cage. And there's lots of problems with that. The main one being that it's dangerous for your rats. And I'll explain why. With the carrier method, you start out with a very, very small carrier. This is the one that I use. This is the size of one of my rats almost. So you can see that there would not be a lot of room in this. Why is that important? It's important because with less room, your rats are not going to get injured. Now I know that sounds contrary. Um, obviously there are some instances where the rats are just too aggressive and in, introductions of any kind are not going to work. In those situations, this is not the method that's going to help you. Um, you'll need to look into other things first. But what happens in the way rats normally get injured is that this rat who lives in the group is being introduced to this new rat and he will want to smell this rat and pin them, groom them, establish dominance. This rat runs away. When he runs away, sorry, I'm working backwards in my mirror. This rat's going to grab him. And when that happens and this rat's still running, he winds up with a tear in his little skin. And that's how the rats tend to get injured. If they're smushed up against each other, there's nowhere for this rat to go to run away. So he's not going to get hurt. He can get pinned, he can get power groomed, whatever, but it's harder for them to injure themselves because there's nowhere to go up and there's nowhere to go around. So you start them out in that small carrier and most people leave them in that 24 hours, but it really depends on your rats. If they're calm, if they're not upset, if they're chilled, then you move to the next stage, which is a slightly bigger cage. In my case, I use this hamster cage. Um, you can actually still see one of the dividers in it. I actually split it in two, three sections and put the rats in the middle section first. This gives them just a little more room than that tiny carrier, but um, not a lot yet. They still basically can't move without touching each other. Through this whole process, they need access to water and food, so you scatter their food on the floor. This also forces some interaction with rats who might be nervous about new rats. Um, and it just, it helps them to not argue over food as much as if it were in a bowl, because a bowl is something they can guard and protect. So after they've done that for, you know, at least a few hours and they're not fighting or whatever, you can make your cage slightly bigger. So with my cage over there, 
I took one of the partitions out. And as you saw, it's that was the way I went. What typically happens is at some stage, and for some rats at every single stage, they will argue and reestablish hierarchy. If they do well and they start, you know, they call this norming where they're ratting around normally with each other. There's no arguments, no fluffing, no puffing. Um, then you can move on to the next step. If you see any of that, you wait until they have gotten to that point before you move to the next step. In my rat's case, I stayed at this step with two sections of that hamster cage for three days. Um, George had just recently lost his best friend and he was really angry about it and he was mad at me for giving him a new friend and he was not happy. And so he was lashing out at our newest little guy, Mac and Cheese. Nobody was hurt and I have included a video of what their arguments looked like because I want you to see so that you can understand what can be normal in an intro. Um, at some point on day three or four, I can't remember how long I said it was, something flipped and he just was like, okay, this is the norm. This is the way it is. I guess I just have to deal with it. And we've not had a problem since. Not once. Um, so I felt like from there we moved to the critter nation. It was very empty. It was literally the fleece mat, water, food, and the wheel. And that's it. Um, and litter boxes, of course. So, um, they only had to be like that for like half the day and then they got a hammock back and then the next day I just went ahead and decorated the whole cage because they were fine. With rats that are having more issues, some rats will argue over every single thing you put in the cage, which is why you put something in and see how they react. Um, my boys are pretty chill. They have good temperaments, so this was not really an issue for them. Once they figured out how they worked as a group, they were fine. But if that's not the case for your rats, then you need to go slower. If you see that they're arguing a lot over something and they just don't seem to settle, you take it out and leave them at the previous stage for a little longer. You basically backstep it a little. So hopefully that makes sense and explains why I feel like this is a better method. Um, and we can go into the video where I show you how I did it and what exactly it looked like and all that. I have lots of videos. I have lots of pictures. I'm going to try to make it small, but honestly, there's a lot um, because it took a week or so. Um, so I'm going to try to trim it down and make it watchable. But hopefully it gives you some good info and you're able to use this information to help when you need to intro rats. So stay tuned. So I wasn't able to capture video when I first put them in this carrier, but when I first put them in here, um, Mac and Cheese would scream if any of these rats looked at him. And I'm talking not even touch him, literally just looked at him. He was just terrified of these other rats. And I'm not really sure what that was about because he was around other rats. He was in a group. He had only been alone for the two weeks of quarantine. Um, so I'm not really sure why he was acting that way, but I really wish I'd gotten it on video and just I wasn't able to because I was busy doing other things and trying to keep an eye on them at the same time. Um, I was cleaning the kids' playroom at the time, and so it was kind of busy, but you can kind of see that he's still very hesitant. He's been in this carrier now for about two or three hours. Um, he's still very hesitant with these three. He doesn't want to touch George at all, and he's really not comfortable even with Poochie at this stage. He was just like pushing him away with his paws, didn't want to be touched, but he's not screaming over everything either, or even squeaking, because he went from like screaming over them looking at him to squeaking every time they looked at him, every time they touched him, and then he kind of chilled out and was like, okay, they're not going to hurt me, I don't have to be so dramatic. Um, but he's still curious, like, which actually I think was a good thing and helped him a lot, because the stress of being in intros didn't really slow him down, it just made him more cautious. So... Um, yeah, that's about where it was. There were some scuffles in this carrier, but I did not manage to get any of those on video despite my best efforts. I just kept catching them too late. So this is still pretty early. I think they'd been in this carrier about three or four hours at most at this point. So yeah. It's good. It's good. Mac and cheese is there at the bottom. There's George. Now can you read this and book? Blue and 
and Truth Day. Can I hold it? Sure. Working on it. This is the Get Along Carrier. It's very tiny. And they've gone on a very scary car ride to the chiropractor. I think Mac and Cheese is going to be a big rat because he is only eight weeks old and he's almost the same length as Poochie. Wait, he's older than me? No, baby. He's eight weeks. They're on an antibiotic for an abscess. George has one on his tummy. Poochie has one on his neck that got cleaned up. Just making sure we don't get a new infection. They like their medicine. Is it nummy, Poochie? So here you're just seeing them move around the cage, getting used to the cage, getting used to each other, smelling the new space. Here you'll see a small disagreement between Mac and Cheese and George. Come on, George. Calm down. Good boy. And George calms down. Good boy, Blue comes George. over. He tries to snuggle him. Good boy, George. Mac was just still down. nervous because it's George okay. was there. It's okay, Mac. It's okay, Blue. Come on. It's okay. See, Mac, he's not hurting you. He just startled you. It's okay. He's falling asleep. You're fine. You see him react to George right there because he's still on edge from the confrontation that happened a few seconds ago. He's watching George really carefully because he doesn't trust him. He doesn't know who the strange rat is. I want you to see this part because you can see that Mac is still very hesitant with George, but he's also curious and he wants to work out the situation. This is how well-bred rats should react. They don't avoid, they want to figure out how they fit into a group. Much better. So he's kind of sniffing a little. Um, he actually was trying to groom George just a little bit, but George is not really interested. That's because this was still early in the steps and George was still very angry. Uh, the whole concept of being given a friend. So every time Mac tries to touch him, George is pushing him away with his little foot. Mac's lowering his head there. He's saying, you can groom me if you want. It's okay. And George is like, no, go away. And finally, George kind of lays down. Mac is on top of Blue because he felt very safe with Blue next to him. He really wanted to snuggle with George and George is just like, no. You can also see in the background, Poochie's not upset. He's washing himself. Blue is actually kind of underneath Mac, so they're both relaxed. That's because they're the alpha and the beta, and they will step in if they have a problem. Everything's still pretty chill. But George is just still not letting Mac touch him. He just does not want him to. So at this point, they've been moving around the cage a little bit because I was doing stuff in the rest of the room, cleaning. You see George sniffs Mac. Mac freaks out. Poochie steps in. And Mac kind of squeaked at him. I tell them to calm down. But clearly, there's not a lot of stress going on at this point. He's just kind of unsure what's going on. The other rats are unsure. They're like, what's all that noise in the background? What's mommy doing? Does she have more food for us? 
Lou is still sleeping through the whole thing. They're actually fairly relaxed for the situation. At this point, I've moved them to a bigger space. I want you to watch Mac and Cheese's tail though. You'll see that he's wagging his tail. In this instance, he is nervous because George's butt is touching him and he and George are still not very good friends yet. And we notice this a lot with him, that when he gets nervous, he wags his tail. He does do it when he's happy sometimes, too, but through the intros, I had to watch really closely. He was so excited to have more space. And the other rats are eating the food that I had just scattered in there. So they're just moving around, getting excited, picking up food. I also had given them a chew toy, which Mac was excited about. But really, they just wanted, he wants to come out and play. He's a baby, so it's pretty normal. Best you, best you, best you, Blueberry. He's still super nervous. It's only been about 24 hours though, so he hasn't really built a strong bond with anybody yet. So at this point, there's not a lot going on. You'll see that they are fairly relaxed. Mac's a little bit nervous, but they're moving around the cage and they are not particularly stressed. A lot of people would move from this stage and just throw them into a cage because, hey, they're not fighting. I'm going to attach a clip next of why that would be a bad plan because you could tell Mac and Cheese is still a little nervous. They still don't know exactly who's the boss and where they fall in the group. Um, and if I had just moved them to a regular cage at this point, it would have been problematic. So here I'm mentioning that I had a camera set up to watch them overnight since I sleep downstairs and the rats are upstairs. And I peeked in on them several times and there was no arguing or fighting. Mac was just very uncomfortable which is yet again why moving forward at this stage would not be a good plan. They're still not sure what to do. Who do you eat food with? Who do you hang out with? Who's good to snuggle? Who's going to wrestle with me when I want to play? Who's going to groom me if I ask to be groomed? And all of those things are very important for the normal life of rats. I want you to understand what you're about to see because it can be a little scary looking. Um, this is what I was seeing a lot of was this type of argument between Mac and Cheese and George. The reason I was not concerned is because George calmed down every single time. No one was ever hurt. There was no blood drawn, no scratches, nothing. Also, if I got nervous, before I could even get over to the cage, Blue would step in and split the two of them up, which is what a good alpha should do. Um, and then he would go back and forth and either calm Mac and Cheese down or go groom George and calm him down. But he would tell George when he was being ridiculous, um, kind of like a parent who splits kids up when they argue. So I just want you to know that I was right here through this whole thing, and it looks a lot scarier than it actually is. This is the baby. This is my older guy. Every time he gets excited, he gets mad. I'll close the cage so it doesn't get out by accident. Okay, he gets all puffy. George! George, stop. And he'll calm down in a minute, especially if the baby doesn't do anything, which he's not, he's just kind of hanging there. George, hey, come here, quit, 
Hey, Blue, can you go deal with that? That's your job. You see, he's just grumpy about it. Good boy, Blue. Calm him down. And that's what happens. Blue and Poochie get in the way and knock, tell him to knock it off. And then Poochie comes over here and calms the baby down. And tell him it's okay. Say it's all right. She snuggles him. Sorry, this is blurry. And then he calms down and he's fine. And George is fine. But he gets like, it's only George that gets upset with the baby and I don't understand it. I don't. He's pinned him a couple of times, but nobody has been hurt. No fur has gone missing or anything. The baby just also squeaks over a lot of stuff. It's actually why I put the toy in because I was hoping that would help him leave George alone. At that point, I shared this whole video with a group on Facebook that is more um, familiar with the carrier method. And the number one thing was that they said to just give it a little more time, that the rats were doing what they were supposed to and it was okay. And we just needed to let George kind of sort through his emotions of losing his friend and being given a new friend. Um, the other thing that was mentioned and I would be remiss if I didn't say this, is that normally you should have two babies when you're doing intros like this because then they have somebody to go through quarantine with. They have somebody that can make them feel better when they're scared like Mac was um, and that sort of thing. I chose not to do that. In the future, I might change that, but I'm not sure. Because of the way I'm trying to add rats into my mischief and space their ages out, that may not work for me. Um, but that would be a helpful thing was what they said. Now, I'm not really sure that would have helped in our situation because George would have still been upset if there were two babies. Um, and honestly, if they were both as skittish as he was towards George, it might not have worked out well either because they may have both run and George gotten even more upset. But it's just something I wanted to mention. So I left them together for about another day. And within that point, I saw this. They were snuggled. They were being cuddly. They were having no issues with fighting. And um, you'll actually see Mac was grooming George, which was a big freaking deal. That meant there was some acceptance going on and we were very excited to see that. This is their first free room in the playpen. They have doing excellent. A little bit of wrestling. That's normal. George is a bit excited. See, he didn't hurt you, Mac. But no puffing, which is what I was wondering about. They're doing really well. This is good. This was the first time that I saw them play. This is actually playing. Mac is playing with George. They are wrestling. It is not aggressive behavior. It is not dominant. It is just fun. And I was so happy to see this because George is actually my most playful of the older guys. And his friend that passed away was also very playful. So seeing him play with Mac was just a big deal in him accepting Mac into the group. Um, it was also really exciting because at this point I was cleaning out the Critter Nation so that they could go play in there and have more room. And the fact that they did not have any arguments or fights at all in the playpen 
showed that they were ready for that stage. And there was a lot of things that could have triggered that just because they were excited and that had been a trigger before. There's new things to play with. There was stuff to chase, like you can see Blue's chasing George here. Um, but they're playing. There's no aggressive behavior going on. It's all excitement and grooming and pouncing and zipping back and forth. And they were just so happy. And at that point, I had no more issues with them. They all get along very well now. Um, no problems at all. So they were just being silly and playing at this point. Next, you're going to see the Critter Nation all cleaned out, how I had it set up for the next stage. There's a blanket, litter boxes, food, water, and a wheel. This is when I put them in the cage. I'm moving the camera that I had used to observe them so I could see them from where they are here at this point. Um, it looks like there's a lava ledge in there too. Their nails were really sharp and so I put that in there to keep them busy. Get their nails trimmed a little. They were so excited to have more room to play. You can see how excited they are. They're just kind of, wow, we get all this space. This is wonderful. Mac has never been in this cage, so he's exploring the whole cage, which I had deep cleaned before I put them in, but I realized after I made this, I did not wipe down the top of the cage, which is where they used to play. Um, before I started intros and piled all the stuff on top of there. So it's possible he was smelling the other two rats that we had, Nipples and um, Fred, but anyhow, they weren't, that wasn't a problem at all. So they were running around and just exploring and being excited. And um, Max trying to figure out this wheel, which he's used it several times. He was small enough to fit on it. And I put that one in there at that point just because I knew Mac could fit on it and it smelled like the playpen, so it smelled like everybody. And um, Poochie actually uses that one too, even though it's small. I don't use it for them now, but um, I knew that they would both use it temporarily while I made sure that they were settled well and could have other things. So here I'm making sure they knew that they had food. I used the food bowl from the carrier so that smelled like them. They've got the willow ball in there that they were playing with. Mostly they were really excited to have a litter box back. Um, my boys are litter trained, at least the older ones are, and so they were very happy to have that back. They do not like using the bathroom in the aspen shavings or in hemp or any of that. They want their litter boxes. You can see Blue's going to get under the fleece and teach Mac all the bad habits, and Mac's like, oh, that's a really cool idea. How'd you do that? And at some point, I gave them a blanket, which you saw in the picture earlier. Um, I'm not really sure at what point I did that. Usually there's a litter box in that back corner, which is, makes it harder for them to get under the fleece. But at this moment, I just didn't worry about it. They were having a good time. No. Then they can burrow, and they're happy. They're happy babies. From here, we decorated the cage, as you can see in these pictures. I did it very minimally so that they could still be separated if need be, but that turned out to not be necessary at all. And Mac was very excited to have all kinds of fun things to play with, new toys, and um, yeah, it just worked out really well. From here they snuggled a lot, they played, and they're still together and happy now. So I hope this video was helpful for you and taught you a little bit about the carrier method. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike it, give it a thumbs down and tell me why in the comments below. After watching this video, would you use the carrier method with your rats? Why or why not? Um, and I hope y'all have a great day. Bye.